Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. You join me this time at home in my garage where we're gonna be talking all things 12 volts. So I kind of nerd out on this stuff because I have a background in IT and obviously as a cameraman who works remotely, a 12 volt setup is like super important to keep all my camera gear charged up. So in this episode, I've got a brand new solar panel that I'm gonna install and that we're gonna connect up into my 12 volt setup that we've already got. So before we get started on that project, let me just talk you through what I've actually currently got set up here in the back of my Mahindra Scorpio. So in a previous episode, you would have seen when I was down at Rybuck Engineering, we installed their false floor product so that it can accommodate this Ken Goey battery system. I removed the, uh, the actual floor part so you can see inside. But at the moment, there is a 110 amp hour lithium battery from Ken Goey, which is the Node edition. The Node edition includes the 110 amp hours of capacity, but it also includes on the, the side here, two 20 amp DC to DC chargers, which in that previous episode, you would have seen where I hooked it up with Zach to the car's starter battery through a, a wire that we actually got to work through the chassis rail, so it's super protected. Um, and it comes up into the floor and obviously keeps this battery charged when the engine is on. So far, 40 amps in is like a tremendous amount of power. And that's actually really good at getting this thing back up to charge really quickly. However, in the times where obviously we're parked up on the beach or um, you know we're at camp, the engine isn't running, which means that if I'm charging my cameras or running my laptop, it's draining this battery and nothing's going back in again, which is why I think having a solar panel on the roof is actually super important. So the other thing that we got set up, um, this thing actually has a shunt, which is a Bluetooth shunt, which means on my phone, I can see the charge that's going in and the current that I'm drawing out of it, as well as a percentage out of 100 of how full this thing is. Super useful, actually, I think, because I'm uh, often curious how much I'm drawing, whether it's just the fridge that's on or when I've got all my cameras plugged in, if I'm really draining it. And it actually gives me an estimate as to how long I've got left until that thing will be empty or how long until it'll be fully charged. Uh, the other thing we've got is a couple of fuses, which are um, hooked up. I've now done a couple of uh, sort of uh, wiring extras in the meantime. I've actually hooked it up to the uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter plug that's actually the stock part in the Mahindra Scorpio's boot. Uh, a Anderson plug here, which I actually ran my fridge off. And then I've run one underneath that runs to the back of the vehicle here that I plug into my camper trailer when I'm taking it on camping trips. Oh, and another very important thing, which is um, super useful because the interior lights here seem to turn off after about 30 seconds of the car not running, uh, is a light strip on the very top here, which if I, uh, it has buttons and it's wired in. So super useful, obviously, for working out of the back of the car when it's dark. So that's what I've got in the back of my camera car at the moment. However, today's episode is about installing that solar on the roof. So the products that I've purchased to get this achieved is a Voltec 200 watt solar panel. It's actually a meter by meter with a black frame. And I actually went with that brand mainly because of the size. I wanted something around 200 watts to get as much as I could into the car while it's sitting in the sun. Uh, and obviously, as you've seen in a previous episode, I've already put stuff on my roof, which is uh, Max Tracks and the brackets for my 270 degree awning are currently taking up floor space up on the roof. So that proximate meter by meter will fit up there perfectly. The other thing I got from Ken Goey is actually a Victron MPPT 7515 Smart Solar Controller. Solar panels come in at a higher voltage to what these batteries can handle, so it's obviously super important to get a solar controller to regulate that down into a charge that the, the battery can accept. The thing I'm interested about with this is it's got uh, that smart capability, which means it connects to the same app that the Smart Shunt does which is through Bluetooth. So it'd be interesting to see what stats I can get out of my solar panel. The other things that we've got for this is uh, I've got a cable which is, has a Anderson plug on one end and the solar plugs on the other. Uh, I've got cabling at home, but I just felt that this was already done wired up so it'd be easier to run it in with something that's already pre-made. The other thing I've picked up from my local hardware store is some L brackets, which I've already pre-drilled and painted black so they blend in with the roof rack. Anyway, there's a lot to do, so I better get started. I think the first part will be start at the top and work my way down. Not looking forward to pulling off the trim, but we'll get to that and we'll see what we can do.
you go, that's the solar panel installed. I had to sort of mount those four brackets in a bit of a weird situation because I found out that there actually wasn't enough room in this little spot here due to the brackets from the 270 degree awning. So I ended up going with two at the front, so to sort of stop that lift from happening. One at that sort of corner over there, and then one back in this corner, just sort of as close as I can to this end on this sort of side of the vehicle. So that's nice and solid now. I've run this, uh, or connected up this cable, uh, which is actually just hanging down now. So now we'll get onto the tricky part of the trim. Okay, so we've run our cable down to this point now. What a nightmare it was getting it through that trim. Obviously putting it up on the roof was actually a bit of a piece of cake, but um, getting it through this panel here, there was a lot of grommets that I could get through, but then on the other side, for whatever reason, there was a, a panel that was preventing me from getting down to where this opening was down the bottom here. So in the end, without being able to see fully what's going on back there, I had to drill a hole and um, made sure I obviously sprayed it to make sure it's protected and then got the cable onto the other side, down the bottom and through down to here. Now we're onto the fun part, however, we get to wire this into the regulator, which is gonna sit in this little spot here. Uh, the diagram that I've got from Ken Goe shows that the negative terminal from the regulator will go to this shunt so we can obviously record what's going in and the positive straight into the battery. Let's get started. <laughs> There you go, that's everything installed now. The solar panel's mounted on the roof. The wiring looms come down the side into this MPPT smart regulator into the battery and it's all wired up, turned on and actually showing charge now going into the battery, which is fantastic. The uh, actual Victron regulator is actually showing up as a Bluetooth device now in the Victron app. So it actually can see now through the uh, smart shunt what's being coming in and what's going out as I guess an average, but also I can go into the uh, smart charger now, the regulator, and I can actually see what the solar panel's inputting individually, which is fantastic. So I'll do a review of all this system at some point once I've used it for a couple of months to make sure that everything's working fine and I'll tell you what I, what I experience. But I think now with the fact that it's got a 40 amp hour DC to DC charger coming in from the engine and now a 200 watt solar panel on the roof, for what I'm using, once I get my drawers installed to charge cameras and run fridges, I think will be a fantastic charging system. Obviously down the track, 110 ampere isn't gonna be enough for uh, if we're pulled up for a long time, I got a lot to charge. So we'll probably end up getting a second 110 amp hour lithium battery installed once those drawers are in. But for the moment, this is like a fantastic solution for anyone who's running, wanting to run a fridge on the weekend or for a camping trip. And with that Rybuck false floor, it's gonna be all contained underneath the floor. You get all this boot space. Now that I've removed my third row of seating and it's gonna be absolutely perfect for anybody who's uh, after that sort of solution. Anyway, I'll get this false floor put back on top of this uh, battery system and I'll see you in the next one.